Now we're going to do a punch biopsy of skin. This is the exact same procedure that would be used for either epidermal nerve fiber density testing or for diagnosing other conditions of skin like dermatitis. For epidermal nerve fiber density testing, the first thing we have to do is measure the location for a biopsy. And in this case, we're going to go 10 centimeters proximal to the lateral malleolus, roughly here. I'm going to use an alcohol wipe, prep the site. At that point, we're going to administer anesthesia. Now for epidermal nerve fiber density testing, we want to avoid damaging the biopsy itself. So we're going to make a V-shaped pattern of anesthesia. on either side of the proposed biopsy site. And we'll top off with betadine. And wipe off with a gauze pad. At this point, we'll give it a second for the anesthesia to take effect. We're now going to take the biopsy itself. We're going to hold the biopsy laterally so that we can turn it between our thumb and index finger. Now it's important with epidermal nerve fiber density testing that we turn the punch and don't just push it through the skin. In doing this, it's going to incise through the skin. In this location, usually we're going to go about halfway up the punch blade, which are all the punch, and we've completed the incision now. Now the key with epidermal nerve fiber density testing is removing the specimen without damaging it. And what's very important is that we grab the specimen itself down deeply. In doing so, we won't damage the surface epidermis, which is needed to do the actual count. So we'll make sure we grab the specimen down deep, avoiding the epi surface epidermis, and remove. So we'll obtain the vial of Zamboni's fixative labeled number one on the label, take off the top, drop the specimen in the fixative, and close up the top. We want to make sure that specimen gets submerged in the fixative so it's fully bathed. Now we're going to finish off by taking care of the wound. Some sort of chemocauter reagents is helpful. If you have gel foam, that's okay. Um, Moncel solution. Bottom line is we want to stop it from bleeding when the epi wears off. So we're going to put some chemocauter reagent, in this case it's Moncel, press it on the wound for a few seconds, and we're done. Now we'll dress the wound. First we'll apply it apply a triple antibiotic or some side of bacitracin or whatever your, your product of choice is. I like to fold up a 4 by 4 in quarters for extra absorption, place that over the wound, and then finally just a common bandage over that. Applying some pressure, and we're done. Post-operatively, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the patient to keep it dry overnight. The next day, the patient can resume showers with that daily bandage changes. Every day after the patient gets out of the shower, pad dry, bandage change. Those bandage changes continue until the wound is closed, and it usually takes anywhere from two to five days.